All right, here's a really quick breakdown of our Moonshine Still Kit. All that stuff right there, self-explanatory. You guys get all that stuff. Pretty easy to understand. Anybody can look at a picture and see. Next. Hot body. One side sharp, the other side isn't. The sharp side on the inside. Circle. Go in. to the point where it's resting up against the rim, clamp it tight, solder it. Don't forget the plug. Thumper comes with two circles. Same thing as the pot. Bottom in there good. Solder it up. This one's going to have two holes in it. Grab a tool from your shop right there, or make something up to pull up the edges to be able to solder that nice and flat. There's your thumper. Cap kit. Clamp and solder. Fit it. Clamp it and solder it. You can rest this right on top and solder it, or you can cut it out, rest it on the inside and solder it. Cone, same situation, one side's sharp, the other side's not. Sharp side on the inside, flux and solder. Worm, same exact thing as the pot. Once you have the pot and the cone, you'll match up the cone, flip it over, solder on the outside from the outside, just like that. It's going to be nice and easy for you guys once it's all together. Okay, that's the breakdown right there. It's the same material that we use in all of our other ones. What is that? Two minutes. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Here's an example of how to clamp the pot. There's going to be a sharp side and a folded over side. The folded over side goes on the outside. The sharp side will be on the inside. You want to use these clamps to fit the cylinder to the circle as tight as possible. This is the bottom of the pot, and as you can see here, we found something to be able to stick inside that holds the bottom up. You want to flux the edge right here, as well as clamp the folded over seam. All right, for the cone, you're going to want to make sure you flux the right side. So, Bobby, can you show us?
the difference between the sharp side and the folded over side. One side is going to be folded over, one side is sharp. This side is the folded over side, and this side is the sharp side. <laughs> Alright, so show us which side will flux. We want to flux the sharp side facing towards us. And then also you flux on the other side too, right? You got flux the uh, seam as well on the other side. Next is going to be clamping the pieces correctly. With the cone, I love the cones. There's no real wrong way to do it. You want to just make sure it's overhung enough. So with the clamps, we're going to match the bottom up first to make it look nice. Come on a little closer. Okay, perfect. Yep, so we match the bottom up first. You get about a two inch overhang on the bottom. Right there is the overhang. And then on the top, what do you go for, Bobby? About a quarter of an inch on the top? It's going to get a half decent chunk. Most. Yep. Show them how you feel to go in and out, in and out with that. Make sure you guys have gloves on. going to clamp the top now. show them the other clamps that we're going to be using. The longer clamps, so we're going to be using... Everything's good. Yep, just uh, start clamping the sides now. So the reason why we clamp more is because we wouldn't, we wouldn't want to just solder it just like this. We really want to clamp the crap out of it, make it so those gaps are filled. There should be no gaps. If there is a gap, plan on filling it with the solder. Low heat, low temperature. So these seat clamps are going to help close up the gaps and get the copper touching each other. You can see the gap clearly in the video right there. We're going to be closing that gap up so we don't fill it with solder as much. Make sure you don't go too tight. The copper is very soft. If you go too tight with it, you'll actually make some dents in the copper, so be careful with that. So Bobby's continuing to clamp. You don't want to clamp on the seam because you're going to be soldering the seam. All your pieces that you're soldering are always from the inside. Don't solder them from the outside unless you're doing it for added security. Added solder. Okay. One more clamp, the long clamp. This is a 20 or $25 clamp that you guys will most likely need to go buy unless you already have it. This is uh, for the large pieces, for the 20 gallons, the 30 gallons, etc. You want to swap that out for another one? seam again on the outside. Sorry, on the inside. <coughs> yep. You want to get both sides. The problem when you're soldering it, I want you to go nice and slow. You start off with the with the heat here, you get this hot, you continue to move the flame up and you start applying the solder behind it because the copper's already hot. You don't have to go too hot either. Yep, that's a good angle. Try to go, try to go like this as much as you can. A long strip. That way your arm's not in there. Mm -hmm. As 
as much. So we're starting with the flame. You don't want to get it too, too hot. Just enough to the point where the solder starts seeping into the copper. Notice how Bobby's heating the left side, which is the folded over side, where there's two layers of copper instead of just the one. The goal is to have that flame pull the solder in to the seam. The first run up the whole way is just to fill it as much as possible. I'm always telling the guys, push, 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 push it in there, push it in there, push it in there. You want it, drip it out on the other side. That's why I laugh at these guys, when they, our competitors, when they say, oh, look at those solder drips. You want that dripping on the other side, making sure that it's full as much as possible. So notice how he's also using gravity to his advantage. He doesn't have seam to seam flat. He has it kind of sloping down so the solder will, gravity will help getting that solder towards the seam. That's one way of doing it. Now, Bobby, let me see it. Push, push, push. Push, push, push as much as possible. You want that solder filling up in there. You don't want to get it too hot. If you get it too hot, you'll get the flux out. Reflux the whole thing. Get it to cool off. Flame ahead. Solder behind. Pushing it into the seam. Push, push, push as much as you can. That first run, the whole first run is meant for the solder to go into the seam. Whenever you're soldering, you want it to go into the seam. Second run, you're making it look nice. Now before you do the second run, you're going to want to do what Bobby was doing, have the, have the heat on the left hand side and you'll actually see a bubble. If there's space for the solder to move, it will move. How's it looking on the outside? Seeped up, seeped the whole way? Okay. So what Bobby just did was he checked from the outside to make sure you could see the solder line. Um, last, you wait for it to cool off. You flush it down again, clean it all up. Now you're going for the second line, which is called the fill line. You're, you're filling it. The first... The first line, you're filling the overhang, the gaps. The second line is the finish line. You're, you're filling the line still, in, but you're finishing it. So. Lower heat. You've already done the work. You've already done the work. Now you're going lower heat. You're making this nice. You're making this lifetime guarantee right here. Okay, low heat. Filling it up, making sure. Let it cool down. You don't want to touch it while it's still lava, while it's still hot. You want to let it cool down. Now a trick for this too is putting tin foil around the clamps. Because if you see up here, I'm not sure if you can see it, but I actually got solder on one of the clamps, so when we take off all the clamps, it's going to be a little hard. <coughs> so if you put tin foil on there, it'll be easier to take all the clamps off. All right, so you let it cool down. You don't want to touch it. It will. It will it's not structurally secure yet. 
All right, so once it's cooled off, you can start taking the clamps off. Go ahead, Bobby. And that's how you do a cone. Flip the pot into the cone. This seam will interlock with the inside seam here. If you need to shave off some, it's okay. All right, so we found this copper pot here, but you can use anything to hold this in place. You can use a five gallon bucket, put some tin foil around it so it doesn't melt as easy. You're gonna wanna put your cone upside down in your device that holds the cone. You have a friend or yourself, you can devise something. Pick the pot up. Match up the seams. And I mean, by seams, I mean this seam to that seam. See how it. interlocks essentially. That way you get the tightest. Okay, yep. So the way that we solder this, I mean you can't you obviously can't just solder it right here. This the gap is too big. You're gonna want to put something on top to hold pressure down. Um, you can ha also have a buddy hold from the top down. Like for instance, hey Brian come here. Can you help me out for a minute? Just grab the top of the pot and push down because I want to solder this thing on. Push down as hard as you can. Can you go harder? No. Nope. Hey. Alright, well that's still good enough. Just hold it right there and I'll be fine. And then you flux and you solder. When you come to right here, you want to make sure you have a clamp here because if this gets too, t too hot, it will come loose. Once you have your setup like this, and make sure you use more than enough tin foil, you're going to want to make sure your seams interlock and have a friend hold down from the top down so there's not as much of a gap here. If you're alone, you can also put some weight on it. We used to use a 25 pound weight more is better. Make sure it doesn't fall this way or that way. You should be good. Once you have the seams interlocked and less of a gap, and remember you can also trim that down if you have to to get it closer, you're going to want to flux and solder all the way around. I usually do three inch stretches. Alright, so here's a video of the cap kit. This piece is fairly easy. The bevel is on the top. The embossment line is right here. The bevel is right here. The bottom is just the bottom. Okay, so Bobby, go ahead with the other piece. <clears throat> what we're doing here is fitting the top piece in, making sure the seams match up, seam to seam. So see how there's an inner seam? Right there, we're going to make it match this seam on this piece. <clears throat> yep, do that one more time. Okay, great. Now he's clamping it into place. <clears throat> you can have that piece come down right onto the line.
you want it as tight as you can so when you're sealing it up there's not too much space to seal so it involves a little bit of adjusting before you get it perfect and you clamp it with multiple clamps Once you clamp it with more than one clamp, it gets locked in place, and you can continue clamping to get it ready to solder. Now you should flux ahead of time, you should flux the seams ahead of time, so the flux is already there. You also flux the seam before you solder. Looks like there's going to be a spot there where Bobby should put another clamp. Yep, right there. Close up that seam. There was a gap right there. Okay, go ahead. Now go slow with, with this, Bobby. I want to show everybody. <clears throat> you want to keep the torch and the flame ahead of the solder. You're heating up the copper first. All right, go ahead, Bobby. You want to fill it nice and good. See how the solder expands and goes where the flux is? That's why you put the flux down. You don't need too much heat. Final touch up. I always say the first one is to fill it, the second run is to make it look nice. Okay. You don't want to move it until it definitely cools off. Okay. Now for added security on the outside, I'm going to do another small little line just to make sure it looks nice. clamps off. Fitting it in, make sure it looks nice. Okay. So what Bobby's doing is taking the top 
of that piece that he just made and drawing the line on the inside. <clears throat> now when you're cutting this piece, you guys want to make sure you cut bigger rather than smaller. If you cut it too small, then you'll have a huge gap. I'd rather you cut it bigger, and then you can cut it down. You also want to make sure, like if this is an oval, if this piece is an oval, instead of a circle, the circle that you draw is going to be an oval. So you want to make sure you, you form it into a circle first. What I want you to do, Bobby, is do it a little bit too tight just to show them what happens. You know what I'm saying? So now he'll try to fit it in. He's checking to make sure which side's top. Okay. He's gonna try to fit it in now. too tight so see how it's not going up to the rim right there it's too tight that's as tight as it can go now hit it with the slammer just a tiny bit grab the slammer tool hit it with the slammer just a little bit just a little so how do you feel about if you slam that down like really hard it wouldn't go all right so trim it down to the point where you feel like it would still get caught up a little bit but you can slam it hard with the slammer it would go up because that's the point you guys are looking for <laughs> that's that way it's really really tight Can you go get that new guy and tell him that he's not supposed to be wandering around all over the place? Huh? I saw him walk out. He's either in my office or walking around the street. Just tell him to come. John said come back. Nice, Bobby. That's awesome. So we used the slamming tool to hit this piece up to the point where we took the slamming tool out, we went like this, it's not falling out, it's not going anywhere. That's exactly what you guys are looking for. Now Bobby, show him how to uh, flux it and solder it. Watch how Bobby heats up the copper first, he, and he's not even putting the solder in the flame. He's letting the copper melt the solder. So heating up the copper first. He's not touching the copper, not touching the copper at all. Alright, finally he's starting to touch the copper. That's how you make it so it takes. All right, so this is the cone. This is the cap bottom. And you can see that the seams will end up interlocking. And that's what you're looking for. With the cap kit, you want to make sure it's nice and tight. Okay, so clamp the bottom first. See how the, how the overhangs really just about like a quarter of an inch there. 
solder this piece, <clears throat> fit this piece into here, fit this piece into here, clamp it here. You want to make sure it comes down to the embossment line. If it doesn't, it's okay, but it's better off if it does. <clears throat> Once you have this piece clamped, solder that one too, then it fits in it. Then you're stuck doing the top. This is a hard, this is why we say it's hard. You can go and just take the piece divided, cut around, make it look somewhat nice, and then solder it, you know, flip it over and solder it. But the way that we do it looks a lot better. And the way you can hold this piece up just by putting something else in there to hold it up. Slam it down, it will hold it up, push it up against the fold, against the seam. We'll have a nice contact point to solder. Just to see techniques. See, every time you do that, it works. <laughs> yeah, those things are a little junky. They, they never They're old. Fail, though. Yeah, those they, are like they, three years old. No, they're older than that. Really? Right. They were here when I started. And they didn't look like you were new when I was, you know? Yeah. Those were like 50 bucks on eBay. A piece? Yeah, custom, uh, Irwin.
I usually flip it around yeah, so I can get a better thing, angle. I used to go halfway too and yep. Yep. I turn it, but I didn't want to. Yeah, no, thank you. Stop the video and shit. Yep.